Today we are visiting the crop tour plots here. I'm the Echo agronomist here and I'm using FENT technology to create three different tillage plots. Mulberry plowing, cultivator and strip tillage. Come on, let's look at the plots. So here we have the conventional plot where we have the mobile plow which is plowing in the soil that we just applied. What the important thing is to know here is that this is a very tillage intensive operation. We turn a lot of soil over here and of course due to that we have a high fuel consumption. So actually the total wear cost here is uh, 60 euros per hectare for the plowing. So what's interesting right here is also the field efficiency. Because when we're working with a mobile plow, like we are here today, we're turning a lot of soil over. And uh, it's a fairly slow process, so the field efficiency is roughly one hectare per hour when we're doing mobile plowing. In this plot, where we have the field cultivator, we have a less intensive uh, tillage operation uh, we disturb the soil less compared to the mobile plow, so uh, not all the residue is going to be covered uh, by soil. But uh, we have a high field efficiency here. We are talking about two hectares per hour uh, for doing this uh, tillage work. So you get a very rapid incorporation of the soil that's been applied right here. So when you get this very rapid incorporation of the soil, we reduce the ammonia emission uh, significantly compared to where you have the uh, slurry exposed to the air for a longer period of time. So here it's an estimated that the ammonia evaporation is roughly about 10%. So it's significantly less than the multiple plow. The tillage cover operation here is uh, done in roughly 18 to 20 centimeters depth. So there's still a good mixture of the residue here in this plot. In this plot here, we have the strip till plot where we actually apply fertilizer through pig slurry. And we inject pig slurry here into the ground, just behind this tine here on the strip till row unit. And we apply 30 tons of slurry per hectare. Running this kind of, of rig here, it takes a decent amount of pulling force. So we uh, consumed roughly 22 liters of diesel per hectare when we apply slurry and using the strip till bar here. The other thing you will uh, see here is that we have a large amount of residue on the soil surface. That is because we only distribute or disturb a smaller proportion of the soil. We have this band here where we have bare soil that's exactly in the middle of the row where the corn's going to be planted later. And just below here we have this 30 tons of slurry per hectare applied. And that's going to be the main bulk of the fertilizer for the following corn crop. As you see this large amount of residue on the soil surface also is beneficial for reducing soil moisture loss due to evaporation. Another beneficial uh, character of the strip-till system that's worthwhile mentioning is actually the soil temperature. And you, and you know, soil temperature is the important factor for the corn growing. And by having bare soil here, the sun radiation will increase the soil temperature in the strip. But between the rows here, where we have the residue cover, we have, in general, have a lower soil temperature, which reduces soil moisture evaporation. So that's a beneficial point of the strip-till system. From an economical point of view, the strip-till system is also very interesting. Due to that we have a one-pass application here where we're just applying the fertilizer and creating the strip for the following corn crop makes this a very cheap operation compared to conventional way of doing tillage to corn. We're actually looking into a uh, cost here of 60 euros per hectare for establishing these strips ready for seeding. So 
So now that we are here in the strip till plot, I'm actually uh, accompanied here by Niels, yeah. a representative of Samsung. Just a short introduction to Samsung. Samsung is uh, one of the industry leading slurry applicator manufacturers here in this uh, region. And they have actually put a lot of knowledge into how to apply slurry in the most efficient way uh, with concerns for both the economy and the environment. And uh, today uh, Nils is gonna help me just look a bit more deeper into the dynamics within the strip where we have applied the slurry. So Nils? Well, uh, from Samsung's perspective, our uh, goal was uh, over the last three years within this project to uh, accomplish uh, and get knowledge about precision application of slurry, uh, also in combination with strip till. Um, in this project, we, which we have had together with partners from uh, universities and agricultural organizations, we have learned uh, about the depth of uh, where we need to, uh, to place the slurry band uh, and also uh, what not to do, to be honest, uh, about these uh, topics here. And I'll just, uh, together with Jens Christian here, show how to, uh, to measure the, the correct depth of the slurry band uh, and also talk a little about uh, what's very important when we are precise applicating slurry in combination with strip till for corn. And now we talk about the, the placement and the depth. And what you're actually looking at here is the distance between where we place the, the corn seed, which is roughly like five centimeter below the soil surface, and the distance down to where the slurry is actually applied and where the main bowl of the nutrient from the slurry fertilizer is placed. This, this is what you've been actually focusing on. That's uh, exactly the point of all the, of all what we have learned in this project here, yes. All right. So Nils, could you please demonstrate how uh, we actually see where the slurry is placed yes. in the strip? First off, I would like to simulate that a cedar has been here in the strip. And the way to do that is to compact the top of the soil layer. I'll just do that with my boot. What we then do is then, then we take and dig down and push backwards so that we can see where the slurry has been uh, applied beneath the soil here. We then simply measure here from the top of the soil and down to the top of the so slurry band here. And in that way, we can check whether the, uh, the slurry band has been placed in the correct depth to ensure that we're not too close to the corn seed and we're not too far below. Uh, so that we in that way can ensure that the corn has the ideal uh, possibilities for a good and quick growth. Yeah, because the danger is if you get too close for the corn kernel to the actual fertilizer band, you actually can get a bit of uh, solidification and you can actually, actually get a bit of root burn if you got that high concentration slurry that close to where the small roots of the corn is actually starting. So that's the reason why we have these five centimeter further down than actually the placement of the seed. Exactly. That's what we have learned over the last three years of trials, is that we need around five to seven centimeters from the seed down to the slurry band. And that means from top of soil, in ideal conditions, then we should have around 10 to 12 centimeters down there. So, yeah. Another thing that's worthwhile mentioning here now that we have dug up and you can see it here, all of, all of you, is that actually, since there's complete soil coverage over the slurry, the ammonia evaporation is reduced to an absolute minimum. We will estimate roughly about 1% of the ammonia is lost due to evaporation. And that is mainly what is happening in the headland. When you turn around, you get a bit of space there and here and there. But overall, you have reduced the ammonia emission dramatically compared to the other plots that we demonstrate here. 